up, you walk down this alleyway by the side, and what you come across is the first window. And in that first window, you've got a very fragile, vulnerable, frail little girl who is our first prostitute. And I think the fact that she's the first up, it packs a powerful punch because straight away you're forced to address issues of exploitation and the sex trade and everything. The thing about Keenholz installations is that they don't actually set out to make a statement. They force you to actually make that statement. They present things as they are. It's not trying to be political, it's not trying to kind of stir things up, it just says this is what it is and it's up for you then to take it in whatever directions you want to take it. Now the whole installation is uh, made of bits of broken Amsterdam. A lot of these things come from skips and builders yards and were salvaged and flea markets and things as Ed and Nancy would um, drive to Amsterdam when they were living in Berlin, when the studio was in Berlin, in a truck and just come and pick up all of this detritus if you like and that goes for all the things in the windows as well, all the details that you can see are from flea markets and uh, just generally assembled together to create this evocation of the red light district as it was in the 80s. And you can see the mirrors so the girls can see who, who's coming, what potential clients they've got. And uh, the whole thing is covered with these, this dribbling resin. That's very much a Keyhog's trademark, the dribbling resin. They like to Ed, when he started making these things in the 60s, the last thing that he would do would be to cover the whole piece in this resin. And uh, it gives off this nasty smell as well that you might be aware of. But here it's got the effect of being like rain on the windows or maybe the tears of the girls trapped in this dreadful environment. And as you come round the corner, you can hear radios playing from inside the rooms because sound is an important component as well. That a Keenholz installation is there to affect all the senses, not just the sense of sight, and to make you really become a participant. And as you walk down the narrow rooms, now you're not going to get this on the TV monitor, of course, but you can smell it. It's just not nice. And again, in the rooms, you've got the girls with all the promises of what you will get if you're prepared to pay the price. Now the installation isn't quite finished yet, but Geraldine, because they've all got names, they're all cast from real women and they take their names from the women who allow themselves to be cast. Um, the last part of the installation, which we'll be doing in a day or so, is putting all the litter out, all the rubbish. There's going to be discarded newspapers, old beer cans, dried up leaves and things. And Geraldine, bless her, will be kind of standing amongst the trash, um, herself a kind of piece of rubbish. When I said just now that they don't set out to make any kind of social statements, um, they allow you to make the social statements yourselves. And you can see that the building she's sheltering under is crumbling and is propped up by these uh, um, wooden supports anyway, which uh, becomes there's a kind of visual pun between the two wooden supports and her two feet. Um, something kind of broken and crumbling and neglected. Um, and then you come around the corner to the last couple of rooms and you've got the woman applying makeup um, in what is really a very beautiful light, very beautifully created and everything. And then the final one, um, who is so constricted and trapped in the space, it's, I mean, the girls are supposed to be advertising themselves for sale. But she gives the impression that she's pleading for help, rescue me, help me get away from this dreadful situation. So that it's, it's a, an artwork that is documenting a particular moment in Amsterdam's history, because this was made in the 1980s. And it's connecting with so many aspects of the National Gallery's collection of, of Dutch pictures from the 17th century that deal exactly with this subject, with the subject of prostitution. But of course, as things get older and drift into the past, they become safe and less dangerous. But this piece has still got its danger, its rawness to it. And uh, I'm going to be very interested to see how people react to it, how people respond to it here in the National Gallery.